How's it going everyone? Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be covering the Creality K1 and I'm gonna be giving you my initial thoughts on it and whether or not I think that you should pick one up. So full transparency, Creality did send this machine to me to try. I'm not getting paid for this review and they are not watching this video before it's posted. So they are seeing it at the same time you are. That said, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's talk some quick tech specs that's worth mentioning. The K1 is 12 times faster than your average FDM printer at 600 millimeters per second squared. Personally, I haven't tried these speeds, but Creality says that they have tried this at a 0.1 layer height with most typical speeds somewhere around 300 millimeters per second and travel speeds around 800 millimeters per second. Personally, I've been running it at about 200 millimeters per second because that's what I have for the default settings in Creality Print and another slicer that I've been using called Galaxy Slicer. This machine also has up to 20,000 millimeters cubed per second acceleration and can ramp up to 600 millimeters per second in as little as 0.03 three seconds. That means that it's delivering full speed at 90% of the print time. That's insane. Of course, with these speeds, you would have to have a different type of hot end. It has a dual gear direct extruder with a hot end with a titanium alloy heat break and a copper alloy nozzle working with colors in up to 300 degrees Celsius. It has a large fan on the print head with air ducts that cool the model directly, as well as an 18 watt auxiliary fan built into the chamber, which enhances the cooling as well. This helps avoid any type of stringing and warping that could happen during the print. But enough about the tech specs, let's get into the fun stuff and I'm gonna tell you how it prints. So I've done some batch printing with this. I've done some comparisons between Bamboo Labs machines. I've tried different types of filaments and I've just done some overhang tests and just basic printing to see what's the best quality that I can get out of this machine. And I can tell you, I've been blown away with the results. I was able to print almost instantly as soon as I got it out of the box. There's essentially no setup other than just adding a screen and screwing on a door handle. There's not much more after that. It comes pretty much all the way assembled. Once you run the print calibrations, you're good to go. I've tried this machine in a couple of different ways. I've done land printing, I've done Creality cloud printing, and I've also done USB printing, all with the same results. I will say the the way that I've liked my workflow to be on this machine so far is using a different slicer other than Creality print. Personally, I'm just a big fan of Prusa slicer, Orca slicer, bamboo slicer, all built on that Prusa slicer. Um, and I found I found one out there called Galaxy Slicer that already has some Creality K1 profiles and have been blown away by the quality. So personally, one thing that I've been doing is slicing a lot of my personal models in there and then uploading them to the machine through the web interface. The web interface has been super easy to use. You literally just type in the IP address of the printer, which can be found on the display of the printer. And you can put that into your browser, on your computer, or even on mobile web and it works just fine. You can control the printer from there. You can see your camera from there if you installed the, the K1 camera. And you can see all the prints that are stored locally on the USB, or if you want to, you can send them from the cloud too. I like the fact that I can access everything from just the IP address. It, it's basically like it runs its own little server for you to use on a LAN connection, which I love. Another thing to talk about is the build plate. It does have a 220 by 220 build plate. I wish it was a little bigger, but I completely understand that's kind of the standard size for most Creality uh, bed slingers, unless you're going to like a, a larger volume. The K1 also has a bigger brother called the K1 Max. I haven't got to try that one. I hope I get to, um, which has a few different upgrades with it as well. But I haven't been really limited by the size of that bed. Pretty much everything I've thrown at it's been great, even for batch printing jobs. The build plate's sticky and heat resistant, and it also is flexible. So it makes it really easy to just get things off of it by popping it in one direction. And what I found is it doesn't retain heat very well, which is actually good. So once you pull it off the plate, it cools down a lot quicker than what I've experienced with other like PEI bed sheets and stuff like that. So I can pop it off, you know, fairly quickly after the print finishes. I'm kind of impatient when it comes to those things. The heat bed also heats up pretty quickly. If you're just booting it up in the morning, you can be ready to print in roughly around three minutes. There's a few quality of life things that I like that Creality did on this machine. They actually have a table that's displayed on the inside of the printer itself where it shows you know, what, what it thinks the, the parameter should be for the slicer, whether that be the temperature, hotbed temperature, the max volumetric speed, the fan, you know, whatever you need to set. They've kind of got their guidelines of what they would do just built right into the printer for you to look at so you don't have to reference anything else. And this was super helpful in setting up a third party slicer is I had all that information ready directly on the machine. So let's talk about some of the prints that I've gotten off this machine already. 
So first thing I printed was this little benchy here. This is a 16 minute benchy that was printed in hyper PLA. This the the sample filament that they send with the Creality K1. As you can see, the quality is just great on this thing. There's a little bit like a shade of light stringing in here, but at 16 minutes for a a, a, a pretty strong benchy, I'm completely cool with that. To kind of put this in comparison, I did a 12 minute benchy on the uh, Prusa MK4. And while I love the Prusa MK4, uh, it kind of cuts some corners to get those four minutes off. This is pretty sturdy. Like this, this is a very thick and, you know, fully printed benchy and the quality is just insanely good for it. So, so I would say that the K1 beats the MK4 in the benchy race, in my opinion, at least, at least as far as quality goes. Next up, I switched to a different type of filament, which was the Polymaker filament here. You can see this is a, this is just the Polymaker Scientist. Great quality here. Very, basically no stringing on this model. This printed fairly quickly. I don't remember the exact time, but quality is great. And for me not to dial in any of the filament uh, settings for this machine, like the, the generic stock profile and Creality print did this one justice. It's good. After that, I went back to the Hyper PLA just because Creality was nice enough to send me a roll or two of it. So uh, I did print a couple of things with that. I printed this in vase mode. So you could see that it does print uh, no problem in vase mode. This is super flexible because it was printed with just the one you know continuous layer. This is like a little pencil holder slash uh, planter or something. I don't know. My wife likes it though, so that's what matters. <laughs> No issues here. Interesting thing about this one too, is I ran out somewhere around the middle here and was able to unload the filament and load new hyper PLA with no issues and started printing in vase mode again, no problems at all. So awesome job K1 on that test. Next one I printed was just a simple cat. This was third party sliced here. I, I sliced this with galaxy slicer. Um, God, the, the finish on this is really good. You can barely see the layer lines. Just a really good print overall. And lastly, I switched to Inland PLA, which right now I've got some batch printing I'm trying with that, but I printed this bad boy. So this is like a demon skull thing that I found online. I just thought it looked cool, so I thought it'd be fun to print it because Halloween's coming up. I did do some supports on this. The default supports did pretty well on this. I did use the tree supports and you can see it's got a little bit of scarring here on the edge. Uh, I could probably play with the settings and get that fixed. But overall, this machine just, I mean, it's blowing out of the park. Like I think I printed this in like seven hours with, and I mean, it's a, it's a pretty large print. And this is like, it's, it's pretty durable. I, I put this thing at like 50% infill or something crazy. Not really any layer lines to show on this one. I think that I could I could cut down on some of the the uh, the support adhesion issues uh, if I played around with the settings as well as maybe do some pressure advanced tuning just to make sure that that's set up correctly. That's probably something I would do as well. But overall, if if I had tuned filament with this thing, which I'm going to do, it's going to be crazy. The K1 knocking it out of the park. So this is my first impressions of the Creality K1. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you wanna see some specific content with the Creality K1, let me know. I've got some other things I'd like to do with it personally, but you know, if a lot of people say that they wanna see like a specific feature or me to work with it in a specific way, I'd be glad to cover that content for you guys as well. Thanks so much guys for checking out my videos. I'll see you next time.